Okay, so let's try to do distance from a point to a line so you guys can understand what's going on. Um, again, when we are doing this, I want you all to remember that I need you to use your noggin and I need you to use the graph. So with that, let's get started. Uh, the first thing says graph AB and write the equation of this line. So we're going to do that. So while I do it up here, you guys should be working on your papers here. If I graph AB, I have the point 2, 1 and the point 12, 1, which makes a nice little horizontal line segment here. And horizontal lines have y equals equations. So this is the line y equals 1. And then it says plot the point 9, 4. So I'm going to plot the point 9, 4 and call that P. And it's asking how far is P from A? All right, so I want to do this distance right here, and it's a slanty distance. So if I want to find a slanty distance, I'm going to use the distance formula. So again, remember distance is delta X squared plus delta Y squared. And let's see, P is 9, 4, and A is 2, 1. So the difference between 9 and 2 is a delta x of 7, and 4 to 1 is a delta y of 3. Now again, I know that x and y change by a negative amount, but I'm squaring it, so I don't really need that negative. So then that's the square root of 49 plus 9, which is the square root of 58. Okay, fine. What is the distance from p to b? All right, so p to b is that distance right there. P again was 9, 4, and B was 12, 1. And so when we do delta X squared plus delta Y squared, X changes from 9 to 12, so there's a delta X of 3, and Y changes from 4 to 1, so there's a delta Y of 3, so that's going to be the square root of 9 plus 9, which is the square root of 18. But looking at that, I'm pretty sure that 18 has a perfect square in it, and it does. 18 is 9 times 2, so that makes 3 root 2. So that's a nice quick review of the distance formula. Now, why are we doing that? Well, because my last question now is, how far is P from the line AB? So how far is P from the line that contains these two points? Well, P from the line is this distance away, and that distance is vertical, one, two, three. It's three units away. Why did I ask that question? Well, because I want to compare and contrast here. The distance from P to A is not the distance from P to the line. The distance from P to B is also not the distance from P to the line. The distance from point P to a line is the measured perpendicular distance. So if you want the shortest distance from a point to a line, you have to find a perpendicular distance along a line normal to the original line. Wait, what's that word normal? Normal just means perpendicular. So anytime you want a distance from a point to a line, you have to measure from a perpendicular direction. Okay? So let's come down here and use this next one. How far is 5 minus x from the point 1, 2? Again, I want you using your noodle. I'm not going to give you a rule. There's not some nice formula for this. Well, technically there is a formula, but it's gross. I want you using your brain. So let's graph 5 minus x and the point 1, 2 and see where we go. Now, when you plot 5 minus x, I want you plotting all of the points starting at 5 with a slope of negative 1. I want you to draw all those dots like I did just there. And then with your ruler or a folder or whatever, I want you to connect these in as straight a line as possible. I do not have access to a ruler while I'm drawing on my screen, so I apologize for how wiggly my line is. 
but I do want you drawing all those dots. There's a reason for that, so draw all the dots. And it says, how far is 5 minus x from the point 1, 2? Okay, well, if I were going to draw the perpendicular distance, and I didn't scaffold this question for you, if I want to know how far away they are, I'm pretty sure that this is a perpendicular, right? And so if I want to know that distance, it's however long that red segment is. So how far is 5 minus x from the point 1, 2? Well, it's however long this is. So let's kind of do the scaffolding now and make sure that we're doing this appropriately. The slope of the given line is blank. Uh, the slope of 5 minus x is a negative 1. So the slope of a perpendicular or normal line will be the opposite reciprocal of negative 1, which is 1. Draw a line through 1, 2 that's perpendicular. So I need to draw a line with a slope of 1. Did I do that? Oh, yeah, I did that. Let's see. State the coordinates of their point of intersection. Okay, so this is the point 1, 2, and this is the point 2, 3. And let's see, there's the coordinates. Use the distance formula to calculate the distance. Okay, so my distance formula would be change of x, which is 1 squared, plus change of y, which is 1 squared. So that perpendicular distance is the square root of 2. Oh, so, pardon me, I'm taking a quick pause here because my little 3-year-old just came downstairs and it's five in the morning while I'm recording this, so if you hear him talking, that's just Max in the background. All right, so use the distance formula. We did that. Fantastic. So let's move on to one that's slightly more complicated. All right, um, I'm going to stop talking for a second here. I want you guys to draw the line and plot the point and fill in the slopes. So draw the line, plot the point, plug in the slopes. I'm going to draw and plot some things but I'm not going to talk for a minute. You should be drawing right now. All right, hopefully you all have the line drawn like mine. So we had a slope of 1 half, a y-intercept of 0. So I went up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. And again, I want you to plot all the points because you never know which one you're going to really need for this. So plot all the points. Then I plotted the point 5, 0. And now I need to find the perpendicular distance. So we said the slope of our given line was a half. And if I take the opposite reciprocal, the perpendicular line would have a slope of negative 2 over 1, or a slope of negative 2. So now, if I want to measure the perpendicular distance, I need to draw a slope of negative 2 through the point 5, 0. So my slope of negative 2 would be down 2 over 1, or up 2, left 1, up 2, left 1. Okay, and when I draw this in here, that looks pretty good. Now, what are the coordinates of the point of intersection? Um, I'm not really sure. So if I want to find the coordinates of that point of intersection right there, 
I need to do a little bit of math. Oh, somebody should be saying in the room, Mrs. Viver, you did something wrong. Back the truck up. Mrs. Viver can't see her screen. I didn't do the point five zero. I did six zero. So yours probably looks slightly different than for mine. Hold on. Changing things up to over one, down to over one. There we go. Now I have a prettier point. I knew it was supposed to be a good point, but I just couldn't read the screen. There we go. So much better. So if I draw a slope of up to left one or down to right one, there we go. Now I have a happy point of intersection. Like Bob Ross with his happy trees, we have a happy point of intersection. And the coordinates of that point are 4, 2. Use the distance formula to calculate the distance between 5, 0 and the above point. Okay, so I'm calculating the distance between 4, 2 and 5, 0. So my distance is the square root of, let's see, delta x was 1 and delta y was 2 and 1 squared plus 2 squared is 5. So my distance formula gives me the square root of 5. All right. So next it says, what's the equation from number 2? So I want to show you that you can do this with some algebra as well. So if we want to find the equation of number 2, I need a slope and I need a point. Well, that's pretty good because I have the slope and the point. The point is 5, 0. And the slope is negative 2. And if I have a slope and a point, I can use that happy little equation y minus y0 equals, or y minus y1, pardon me, equals mx minus x1. So y minus 0 equals negative 2 x minus 5, and there's the equation. Then it says, what if I didn't do this right? Like, what if I graphed it wrong? Because I kind of did graph it wrong at first, right? I can always double check my work.